All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I hope that this Zoom live is working. There's always a little delay in making sure that it's all happening, but I can confirm now on my Facebook, I'm just confirming on my other little computer here that indeed I am alive um, and I might be able to monitor my comments there. So let me just open up that area here. Perfect. All right. The reason I wanted to come on live via Zoom this morning was because um, I need to share my screen with you and, um, and talk about the topic that was raised at last week's um, first publishing accelerator support call for our authors. Actually, one of my authors uh, from New York uh, said, well, Nat, how do you keep all your folders and files so neatly organized? They look so, um, you know, well managed and all that kind of stuff. And I said, oh, perfect. You have just given me my content for my Monday morning live. Um, so I'm just checking here that make sure everything is going through. I think there might even be a little bit of a delay um, as it goes through. And I want to open up my little um, chat, uh, little content piece here on my phone, here we go. Awesome. So what I was gonna talk about today and then show you on my computer screen is how indeed I organize my files on my computer, my desktop, my emails, and then I'll talk a little bit about apps as well on the phone. Because I have met many a people <laughs> uh, that uh, have 23,000 emails, um, a desktop full of icons and files and, and then I've spent side by side when I've been helping um, my clients in many situations on their computers, like waiting for hours, not hours, uh, but for a long time for them to locate a file on their system. Okay, so sharing a little bit of filing smarts maybe will resolve some of um, some of those um, you know, uh, challenges that you might have around organizing your information. And if I can impart a few little tips and tricks, then by all means, um, you know, uh, take them away and start utilizing them. But really keeping your files and your desktop and your phone uh, nice, neat and decluttered uh, is about consistently building a habit of uh, moving things around or reorganizing or setting aside that time to, um, to get stuff uh, decluttered and organized. I know the first time you do it, it can be a massive, massive um, project to undertake because it's overwhelming. You're starting with so, so much to go through. Um, and in this case, I would recommend, you know, kind of setting aside 15 or 20 minutes uh, on decluttering your um, electronic system, if you like, um, you know, over a number of days or weeks. Um, and then once it is there and decluttered, then, you know, setting aside maybe even alarms that will remind you until it kind of becomes second nature and you can't stand it um, to, to look the way you used to. So um, let's get uh, go through it. So um, emails um, also need filing, um, you know, stuff from your desktop should only be there temporarily. So if, we, if I share my desktop right now, um, you will see that we have got our business logo and this is the same on every single laptop and every single computer around the business, right? So I've got two desktops here. I've got my little laptop. My staff have two laptops. Stuart's got his laptop. So when you actually look at every computer, it actually looks identical um, because it kind of, when you sit down in a different computer, you want to feel, you know, exactly um, you know, they're kind of all alike. So we like to put our branding on it. And I like a nice clean backdrop, um, a black one. So if I do have put anything on my desktop, while I'm working on it, it kind of sits here. Right now, I don't, don't have anything. I would have bought, already like dealt with all my pendings and I would have then deleted stuff from here or filed it away in the filing system. So today being Monday, that is what is, um, you know, it's nice and clean and off we go, we're starting a new week. So the one comment that one of my authors made um, on the call last week, so I store everything um, on my computer on Dropbox, okay? So actually on the actual computer, there's absolutely nothing. There's some Zoom recordings, which actually will get trashed. So I don't like to keep any Zoom recordings. I, I either upload them onto, um, onto um, 
a YouTube um, and keep them there in a secret file and then I get rid of the recordings. I actually don't need, I don't want to keep anything. So I continuously the declutter because Zoom recordings and chat logs and all that can just clog up so much of your computer space. Um, I also regularly uh, uh, get rid of stuff from my downloads. So I know I don't need these either. So I'm just going to get rid of them while we're here. <laughs> Why not multitask, right? Downloads, get rid of it. Empty the bin regularly. Like pretty much if I see stuff in there, I empty it all of the time. I don't let it sort of build up. So I'll just empty the bin. Um, and that's now kind of freed up some space on my computer. It's even cleaner, right? Because I know that when you download something, you don't need to keep it there forever. You either, if you need it, you need to file it away, right? So the whole computer, uh, our computer lives on Dropbox. Uh, and every single laptop um, and computer is obviously logged into this Dropbox for the team. So everyone knows where things are. And actually the biggest challenge when it comes to people um, learning how to operate within our business is, is about finding the locations of files and um, templates and all that kind of stuff. So we can see here on the right hand side, something else you might know or might not know is that you do not need to have all of your files. Um, so these are the big folders, right? There's a lot of subfolders within these folders. But with these big folders, I don't have to have everything living on my computer and taking up the space on my computer. So if it's got a tiny little uh, cloud here uh, on the right hand side, that means that it actually is on the cloud and it doesn't live on the computer. And there is a, even uh, folders here that don't even appear because I have made them because they might be archived folders and they just live on Dropbox. So if you um, actually, if we just go into my um, my Dropbox, let's have a look here. Uh, let's go into Dropbox. And if we go on there, all right. So if we go home and it'll show us actually all files. It'll show us all of my main folders. Now we can see here, there's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 24. But on my actual here is two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 19. So five of the major folders are not living on my computer because I really don't need them um, you know, to be on there. But of course, everything lives absolutely on the Dropbox. But even so, I don't wanna clutter my Dropbox. I don't wanna have a million old files. So that's why I consistently will spend some time uh, tidying it up, right? So we've got various uh, folders that have subfolders. Our big one that we all, uh, a lot of the team uses and my virtual assistant in the Philippines is called Business Systems VA. And within this, of course, there's a lot of different subfolders for all the events, for all the sales tracking, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I actually get my team to take responsibility for their areas and to look through these and actually delete stuff off. Okay, um, you know, templates and a frank frequently asked questions. You can see within here also, not all of the files live on the computer. Some of them are on the cloud and some of them on the computer. Well, really naming files is about, um, of course, um, uh, having uh, naming files is about making sure that you um, have a logical way of uh, putting things there that, um, you know, you would know, okay, so this leads to that, leads to that, leads to that you know, sort of like a file, categorizing. That's what I'm trying to say, categorize. So, you know, what kind of information goes under which category and then which which subcategory and so on underneath that, right? So um, so that kind of what the computer system look, looks like. Um, let me just see here. I have, um, I have not made this video public, so I'm just gonna change that. Um, all right, cool. I've just changed it on, on Facebook. So we will hopefully some people who are waiting, who are waiting for my live to go. I'm so sorry that it was made uh, private. And now you guys might be watching the recording. So anyway, so okay, so that's what kind of all of that looks like. And, and every now and again, I will go through, especially we share a lot of folders with our authors. So when their books are finished, we actually don't need to be sharing a folder with them. So we ask them if we can remove it. And we do that consistently. So Part of our weekly and monthly activities and definitely biannually or annually, we go through a big purge to make sure that we don't have unnecessary outdated information in the computer. 
So that's the filing system. Everything makes logical sense. And um, the, the team then learns it because, of course, you might be the only person that is, um, you know, in your business right now, but you've got to think about the future and how, what makes logical sense, not kind of just something secretly that makes sense to you um, of how you would find files, but, you know, what would make sense to other people as well. So now I'm opening up um, the uh, inbox. Sorry, that was just um, just a random email here. So obviously there is a, a few little, um, a few emails here that have come in. Uh, by the way, I already uh, went through emails this morning and I filed away what's appropriate into um, different people's um, pending folders. So each of our team members have as a pending for Julie, pending for Lenny, Nat, Stu and Viv. Okay, and then of course, Vivi this morning is going through her, a long list of about 15, 20 emails here. Um, Stuart doesn't have too many, I've got a few. Um, Lendy doesn't have any and Julie's on the day off, so she usually doesn't um, have many as well. Pretty much this is always empty also by the end of the day. It's Monday morning, so obviously Vivi's going through a, everything that's come over uh, for the weekend right now. But then there's other folders as well. So other folders like for template emails, for publishing emails, so templates, but then templates below that has subcategories of for our half days, for our new clients, for online courses, publishing and retreats and sales and all that kind of stuff. And certainly we file away various things within each of these folders over time, like all my electronic invoices over the years go under, under this folder. So if I never, ever need to track back an invoice, you know, I'm not printing it off, okay? Now, every... Again, now and again, just like you see the Dropbox, we will sit there and we will go through each of these folders and what is inside of it. So these are the active folders, the pending, but then the other ones might have stuff filed away that also gets outdated, like a sales uh, email template may not be relevant. There might be a new application form. We may need to resend it and all that kind of stuff. So we go through and sometimes we even delete folders. It's no longer relevant, right? And so boom, you go delete it and all that kind of stuff. So that's how everything kind of sits neatly or organized. So it doesn't actually live in our inbox. Our inbox, as you can see, it's got three different things there. But again, um, you know, for example, this is, yep, this is just a response. I can just delete it, okay? So um, so that's what the email system looks like. Um, good morning. For those of you that have joined live, um, the reason you couldn't join at 9 a.m. is because I didn't realize the call was going out just to me and not to everyone else. And then I was able to, in the middle of the call, amend it and make it go public. So that's why I can see a couple of comments there from Leslie and my VA saying, I can't share the live, um, which is why you couldn't. Okay. So, um, so that's what the email system looks like. So again, categories and subcategories within those categories. So I'm just gonna sh stop sharing my screen so it can be big on the screen. And then same thing applies for phone apps, okay? So if we can see on my phone, I actually have lots of apps, but um, I only have two pages of, um, oh, just that on third page. Actually right now I'm feeling like I need to declutter this, like that's it. two pages full. I generally like to stay only on one page. So what I will look at first of all is what are the really things I don't use, you know what I mean? And then get rid of those. And then the other ones, because on the second page, there's only single apps. Whereas on this first page, if you can see, I don't know if you can see it, but there's actually apps within a category, okay? So I've got categories like watch, listen, photos, utilities, health, conference, speaking, social, business, banking, accounting, all that kind of stuff. And of course, I've got the main ones that I don't put within like a sub folder into a category folder. So I go through, um, you know, and right now it's time to like really look at this page too and go, really, do I need all of this stuff and do I use it? When was the last time I used it? Or can it be categorized into some of the other ones on the first page? Because some of the, a lot of apps that you use can have similar functionality and therefore, um, you know, kind of need to like kind of just go into one area. Now, the one thing that then gets a little bit confusing um, is, um, is that 
you might like not be able to see all your apps because they're super tiny on the on the screen so what you would need to do like i remember what the apps are called like i remember the name of the app so i actually don't go searching for them or memorize where the location is within my phone for some of them i might know but actually pull down the screen and i just start typing the name the app will show up and then i'll uh, then i'll open it that's kind of the fastest way than remembering the location of it on my phone within which subfolder and that way i like everything on the one screen i absolutely hate when little um, notification numbers come on there so I, I go through a couple of times a day and just obviously clear all of the little numbers that come up like it's saying five emails and those emails those five actually are probably my yahoo account which is not part of the business that's like my personal account which i can see here yep that was exactly right and it's mostly junk emails or well, not emails that I subscribe to, but I'm not kind of want to read them. So I go boom, 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 um, and delete. And I'm back at zero in those ones. And I go through, you know, it takes a few seconds to just go through and clear any kind of notifications. I don't keep notifications on. My phone is never on ring um, because I don't want it to distract me. Um, I will look, the phone will always show up a little number if there was a notification. Of course, it'll vibrate if someone's ringing me. And so it does, I don't like dings and bings. I've got my emails off. I've got my phone off. There's like absolutely uh, no noises that come out of any device, if you like, because it, uh, then I can focus and concentrate. And I can always check if there was a notification or something happened. I never miss anything. I mean, you guys would know how fast I respond to stuff. Uh, <laughs> hey, Janine, um, I can see here a comment. I'm trying to, my comments are on this computer because I'm currently on Zoom. So just go back to the start of the call. I'm sorry that it was uh, private before I started live. I didn't realize that um, setting. I don't know why the computer randomly sometimes puts it just to me and then sometimes does it to the public. So let me go through some of the information I had. Um, so as we, as just recapping, all files live on Dropbox on the computer, so nothing. So if any of these computers broke, I couldn't care less. And actually the best thing about Dropbox is you can have your Dropbox app and you can access all your files um, and you, if you know your filing system, which is exactly the same, I don't know if you can see, oh, here we go, oh, this light's very bright, but my filing system obviously on my phone for Dropbox is identical the way it looks like on my computer, so I can find things really fast, and I can share and copy the Dropbox link if I need to give someone that file, and it's super, super fast, so I can take a screenshot of something within my files, I don't need to be at a computer, okay, so I can access my Dropbox of any other computer on you know, even that's never been mine, and I will have still those files for myself. I do uh, from time to time back up all my um, Dropbox also on an external drive, just in case anything happens with the cloud and, and Dropbox, um, you know, so I would have some kind of a backup of my information and the things that I need. Okay, so um, so that's that's one of the um, amazing things about Dropbox is that you can access it on any device. All right, so apps on your phone, we've talked about that. They're cluttering daily, monthly, biannually, like the longer ones, but at the beginning, you just need to cull and probably be consistent over a period of time because your first big declutter is gonna be the hardest. Same thing, you know, when I talk about mission declutter around the house and the physical things, every time I do it, every year I do it, it's easier and easier and easier. And I also get into the habit actually of not cluttering my house. So it's only like little, mostly tidy up and making decisions to move something on um, at that time. Okay, so um, keeping this, um, okay, keeping just the, some stuff on the cloud, which I said before, like, you know, I don't keep all my files on my computers and devices because there's no need for them to take up the space and slow down the computer. So those things that you don't access, especially like video, really long videos that are huge files, probably don't need them sunk with your computer. All right, um, where we go here? Naming folders and subfolders. So categories are key, which we talked about, you know, logically what's a category and what's a subcategory. And slowly you'll develop, you know, like the neural pathways in your brain, you will develop what that looks like, um, you know, on um, uh, what that looks like kind of, um, in your brain like the, those you know the the destination um and that's what you're building when you're creating your filing system is neural pathways of where to find things and so when i someone when i someone when i talk to someone about something oh i know i have a template about that 
I've written a template about this. And then my brain will kind of go, where would that template be? And I'll slowly search for that neural pathway. And generally I can find it within a couple of minutes of searching, or I'll just put in the search field, the logical name I would have named it. And then generally I might find it even faster from that. So using the search field as well is super, super powerful to like kind of not even remember folders, but I would probably leave that as the last thing um, you know, I'd rather you find something, you know, kind of in a logical sequence, because you might not guess the exact name of what you named that file. Um, system update, remove old uh, uh, systems update, so remove old files. So what I mean by this is when your systems upgrade or you, you rewrite them or you tweak them, get rid of the old stuff. Like our publishing system emails change um, over time as we tweak and adjust and we learn better and more efficient ways of doing stuff. So we cull all the old ones. So we're only keeping the latest ones um, that are relevant and not keeping our computers clutters. Uh, search option if you feel lost, which is what I just talked about. Okay, sharing the Dropbox link of the exact file when people ask you, um, which is also very quick to look up and generate from your phone. So sometimes it might be, someone might have asked me something on email or a messenger, and I'm not near my computer or laptop, you know? And what I do is I just find the file on my phone, click, get the Dropbox link, share, boom, I've done it, I've sent it, I don't need to send an email, just send a link and they can download that exact file that they have been looking for from me. Or I can extract some information off a doc file or a link or a YouTube video, because I have like this library of resources for my authors, which is like a doc file that I've been doing Monday morning lives for them. After this Monday morning live, I go into the group. And so those Monday morning lives are like 10 to 15 minutes long. And so the best thing for them is to, is to actually um, uh, categorize them within what kind of things I'm talking about, whether it's publishing, layout, editing, Ingram Spark, Amazon, all of those different things. And then I can actually, um, and then they have a question for me. And so there was one that came up, actually, Leslie, you're probably watching um, watching there um, at the moment. And so, um, uh, you know, you asked me for what does this out of stock issue mean with Amazon in other countries? And I know I've done a video on that before. So I went into the little document and I literally typed in the search field out of stock <laughs> and the video came up and I literally copied and pasted that into the messenger message where um, she asked me for. And then I said, watch this video, it will answer those questions for you, okay? This is really good for, to do for your own clients as well, because you have so many frequently asked questions that you're probably repeating yourself on and on and on and on and on and over and over and over, that it's really good to, um, to have tap into because you just want to be really efficient so you can get on with it and work on the really important stuff, you know, in creation and development of your business. All right, so encourage your team also to declutter regularly. It always starts from the top, right? If you're a messy person, guess what? You're going to be running a messy business. If you're a micromanager, that's what everyone kind of everyone turns into. But I, I very much believe it because I've observed not just myself, but I observe other business owners with different personalities, successful, not successful, messy, super organized. And you can see the, how their team is a complete reflection of how they behave in their business, okay? So if you're the head of your business and the face of your business and you're the boss, right, it needs to start from you and all of your habits that you instill and, and practice in your business, therefore, will be practiced by your team members, okay? So, um, so yeah, so encourage your team to also declutter and keep, like every meeting or every conference we sit down to, to talk about uh, stuff, you know, part of the discussion, especially in our main conferences is, guys, let's go and get on to decluttering. That's one of our to -do, on our to-do list after, because after conferences, you have lots of tasks. And one of them is always, you know, let's go through our document. Let's declutter. Let's get rid of delete, delete, delete. It feels so good, right? Okay. You feel lighter and more organized as you do this, which is what was my next point. And you will win so much more time in your life and daily business operations. So this is ultimately what it's about. It's not so much what does it look like and, um, you know, is it neat? I mean, even messy people can be successful. Um, but how much time do they have left over in their lives where they're not searching for stuff, right? So, um, so what I don't do in my life, I, I hardly ever search 
for things that I own or I have or I operate um, because I continuously declutter. So the time that I spend decluttering and keeping things organized wins back 10 times more time than I've spent decluttering in less searching, in being lost, looking incompetent, doing all of that kind of stuff. So I've said this before and I'm going to say it again. If you go to your email inbox right now and you have got, you know, 20,000 emails or 9,000, even 100, you know, just click select all and delete because and maybe keep the ones from the last seven to 10 days. The other ones are outdated. They won't be relevant and you will never go through them. Okay, and start from absolute scratch. If you want to talk, um, if you want more information on the inbox zero thing, just go on YouTube, even my YouTube channel. If you want to learn something from me and want to see if you've, I've done a certain video, I, I use the same filing system. Obviously, some of my videos are secret and they can be only viewed by my paying clients. But my public videos like these Monday morning lives are there public. So if you went Natasha Denman inbox zero, you will actually find the live that I did on how I keep my inboxes zero and all those strategies behind, you know, keeping on top of your inbox because today's world is online, right? We're continuously communicating messenger, you know, and, uh, email, you know, many people have different other communication platforms within our team. We're using Slack, um, which is a way where I get messages as well. Um, so there's three main places I get messages that I need to respond to. And so I'll go through those, you know, consistently twice a day to just make sure they're just at zero. And, um, and of course, there is going to be stuff, 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 some stuff impending that you are going to, um, and that um, you're going to have um, to, um, to adhere um, to adhere for. I'm just seeing here if there's comments on this other computer. Yes, indeed. Um, some finally, uh, some people found, finally found me that I, when I came on. I know I, I was like talking to myself for like 10 minutes, but realizing I wasn't public. So there you go. So Tony um, uh, from um, USA who asked about this, hopefully, this has given you a little bit of a behind the scenes look of um, the desktop, the filing system, how I think when I declutter, how I name files, what I categorize, and also the email system and then the behavior around apps and things like that. The thing with apps is like, you can always download it again if you go, oh, I missed that app, I, should, I need to use it. Once you've downloaded it once, you can always get it back. It just doesn't need to clutter your phone, right? And, um, and it finished off like with me commenting about the YouTube channel. Even my YouTube channel has playlists um, and categories within subcategories. Let me see. Let me see if I can show you that as the last thing. So I'll just share my desktop one more time since I've got the, power, um, the ability to share my desktop on coming through on Zoom. So um, here we go. So um, my YouTube channel. So this is my one here, here at the top. Now, if we're going to the library, and the uh, library is, hang on, that's history. Sorry, down here. All right, so you can see I actually have lots of what I call, they're, they're called playlists in YouTube. And, um, and within playlists, there's obviously things within them. So let's take Masterclasses 2020 for, uh, for last year. So my authors get to attend to the, uh, these Masterclasses once every six weeks. It, there's six that happen in the year. So within the year, here we go. We filed away then masterclass one, masterclass two. Sometimes I recorded them like to the four different segments and sometimes it was the full day recording. You can tell that by the amount of time. It's five hours, 46 here. And then in the end, I ended up doing part one and part two. And this particular one, I did four parts again. So it just depends. I was trialing different things last year, but they're neatly organized. If someone wants to, or some of my new authors go, oh, shit, I missed all those masterclasses last year. When I catch up, I want to learn from that a bit more. Guess what? I only need to send the link of this particular, so you can generate the link um, through here, and people will be able to access them. Now, what you'll notice here is that this video is unlisted. So, which means only by me sharing a link with my people who get access to these can actually see them. They don't appear on YouTube. And let's just do that um, that, that uh, test uh, of what I said. Let's go Natasha Denman inbox zero. Here we go. It's even pre preempting it. So if we click on there, there we go. There's me. And this was the live with Nat. We was closed the UBS live back then, but inbox zero email system. And it is a public video. 
Um, so if we just click on the video, and I'll just pause it so I don't start talking, um, you can tell that it's public. I'm just wanting to show you how you can tell. Uh, I'm just trying to see if there is a way. Because the other one, it shows the, un, um, if we just go to edit maybe, I'm just going to edit and hopefully, well, there we go, visibility public. And then this is where you can change public, unlisted or private. I never use private because private means I'm the only one that can see it. So I use public or unlisted so that obviously I can share the link. So that's a little bit of where that particular video lives. All right, guys, well, I apologize that I didn't come on um, uh, publicly in the first 10 minutes. Uh, but we sorted it out and looks like some of you did get on the call um, after that um, live and you can go back and watch those first um, 10 minutes that you may have missed. Have an amazing week ahead. Hopefully this was valuable. Let me know in the comments box what was the uh, best uh, tip you took away from what I said this morning and some of my authors. I'll see you over in our Facebook group uh, for our Monday morning live next. Bye guys and smash it out.